All right, so in this video, we're gonna be going over everything that you need to know about setting up your Shopify payments, as well as some commonly asked questions that an ordinary person would ask when it comes to getting paid on Shopify. So that's basically what's happening. What's up guys, my name is Hannah Gardner. If you are new to the channel, in this channel, I talk about anything and everything that has to do with e-commerce and making money online. So if that is stuff that you are interested in, please do go ahead and subscribe to the channel because I am putting out videos regularly. All right, I'm gonna hop into my computer and I'm gonna screen share with you exactly how to set up your Shopify payments. So this is the inside of a Shopify payments page. And the way that you actually get to this is just by going to your settings in the bottom left corner. Once you hit settings, it's gonna bring you to Shopify payments. All right, so this is a Shopify payment page that's actually already set up, but it's very, very easy to set up your Shopify payments this one right here that I'm pointing to um, because basically what it is is it's a payment processor already inside of Shopify. So that means that when you make a sale and someone checks out with Shopify payments, which is actually Stripe, Stripe and Shopify are partnered together, um, Shopify is actually gonna be the one that's giving you the funds. Now, if you set up PayPal, which you can offer both of these payment gateways for your customers, um, your PayPal payments are actually gonna go into a PayPal account. So that means that you're actually gonna have to log in to another you know, processor, which is PayPal, and you're gonna have to deposit the money to you in, from your PayPal account. Now in Shopify payments, because Shopify and Stripe, which Stripe is just another payment processor, just like PayPal, um, because Stripe is partnered with Shopify, that's why you don't actually have to like manually go into your Shopify every day and give yourself your deposit because you can set it up manually where they give you the deposits every day, every week, every month, however you wanna do it. Most people like their money every day. I mean, I like my money every day, so um, you get the point. All right, so the first payment provider that I highly, highly recommend you that you do you know, set up is your Shopify pay payments because that is gonna be, next to PayPal, one of the most common ways people are going to purchase things in your side, inside your store. So um, basically because mine's already set up, you'll actually see a button here that says set up your Shopify payments. And basically the only pieces of information that you're gonna ask for, which mine's already set up here, but it's gonna ask you for basically, obviously your name, your address, your business, EIN number or your TIN number, if it's applicable. So if you do have an LLC, it's gonna ask you what kind of business you're operating. So if it's a LLC, if it's a sole proprietorship, if it's a whatever type of business <laughs> you set up, but mine's an LLC. Most of you guys are probably gonna be an LLC or a sole proprietor. You're gonna basically classify your business, give your business address, the name of the business, and then your name, and then your business address. Those are basically all the things that it's gonna be asking for. It's nothing rocket science. It's information that you should have at your fingertips. But basically, that's all it takes to set up a Stripe account that's you know integrated with Shopify or a Shopify payment account. Now, another thing that you just want to make sure once it is set up um, is you wanna make sure that all these credit cards are enabled. Um, what you're gonna see here, uh, one of the first things that you're gonna see is the standard rates. So if you don't know, just like when you go to Publix and you pay with a credit card, or if you don't have Publix, if you go to the grocery store and you pay with a credit card, the business actually has to pay a merchant fee. So there's a fee that comes with using your credit card for the business that you're purchasing from. So just like you know the grocery store has to pay for the fee when they have a transaction, you also have a merchant fee as well. And those fees are usually around 3%, or in this case, it's 2.9% plus 30 cents per transaction. And I'm gonna go into a little bit more depth of that and show you um, some numbers from my backend so you can see where those fees are actually deducted from your balance when you get paid. Um, so you wanna be able to make sure that you are taking all these credit cards. Different credit cards have different rates. Um, these are the standard rates here. Um, so I don't know, you're gonna have, you have to pay these fees anyway, and I wouldn't forfeit a sale by not accepting one of these credit cards if it is a little bit more expensive than a different credit card, um, because at the end of the day, merchant fees exist everywhere, so you might as well make the sale anyway. Um, 
you wanna make sure that all of these are enabled um, in the US, obviously. Um, you need to make sure that your bank account is linked to your payout, your payout details, which all that requires is your routing and your account number, which is something that you just get from your bank account, personal or business. Um, and then you're gonna ask, it's gonna ask your payout schedule. I obviously want to get paid every day. So your payout is gonna be every day, Monday through Friday. Um, it's not gonna obviously give you a payout on Monday or <laughs> Saturday and Sunday. So you'll be getting your, you'll be getting a Monday payout. And then usually Tuesdays will be your biggest payout because it's gonna accumulate the money that you made over the weekend and it's gonna deposit it on Tuesday. Um, you wanna enable notifications if you want to get notified every time you get a payout. Um, fraud, fraud prevention. Um, I'm just declining charges that fail CVV verification. Um, I just automatically decline it, and if it failed, then you know obviously they have to like do it again. Um, just to keep as many low risk orders, to keep my orders as low risk as possible. Um, the customer billing statement. So the customer statement description is what your customer actually sees when it hits their bank statement. So you wanna make sure it's like your company name because, and this is very, very, very important because if you put something in here that they don't recognize, what you're gonna find is they're gonna be disputing charges on their credit card and you don't want that happening because dealing with disputes is a biatch. We can bleep that out. <laughs> um, so you wanna make sure that the, the description is something that they're gonna recognize so they know that, you know, when they see it, they're not gonna be like, oh my God, what's this purchase? This, this is not me. And then they're gonna like call their credit card and say that they didn't make that purchase when you did. Um, obviously, um, the phone number as well, just in case that does happen, and the bank get, can get into contact with you. Um, so yes, this is everything that you really need to do when you're setting up Shopify payments. It's very similar when you're setting up just like a Venmo account or a PayPal account, which is the next thing that I'm gonna tell you to do is offer PayPal payments as well, um, which is basically if you already have a PayPal account, you just link your PayPal account here. Um, if you don't, go to paypal.com and do open a business PayPal account. Don't do a personal, don't try to make it sketchy because <laughs> you're eventually gonna get caught. If you're trying to make a business, set it up properly, make a PayPal business account, and then sync it here um, to allow PayPal Express checkout. Um, I would say that my sales between PayPal and Stripe is like 70, 30, 30% is PayPal. So a lot of people do use PayPal and are used to using PayPal. Um, now, as far as any other payment providers, there are different types that they also allow you to integrate with your Shopify account. Some of them might require like different coding and stuff, but for the most part, these are the main two ones that most all Shopify stores use. Um, so yeah, this is what we use and it's worked so well. The last thing that you wanna make sure that is checked is the automatically capture payment for orders. Um, this ensures that the customer's payment method is authorized and charged automatically. So you don't wanna to have to manually authorize all these payments um, and delay orders being fulfilled. So I always recommend to keep everything on automatic. Um, okay, now one of the things that I did wanna show you on the back end of the payout is exactly where these fees get hit to your account. So. A few things to note here, um, you can see that in the view payouts tab right here. Um, so you can see your previous payout, your next payout, and your balance. Um, and you can see where all those merchant fees get deducted from your payout. So I'm gonna just move this right here. As you can see, June 15th, there was about $4,800. The refunds, like something that I refunded got deducted, adjustments, and then fees. This fee column here is where those merchant fees are being taken out of your balance. So we'll make another, I have already started to make another video on just like all the different types of flows of money inside of Shopify. But one of the most important ones that you want to factor into your final profit of sale um, is these fees here because that is about a 3% fee. So when you're calculating your profit margins, you want to make sure that off the top 3% is being deducted from your final profit. Just for your own bookkeeping, it's good to know to have accurate you know, books on what you're actually making. But I also just wanted to show you in here where you can see that more in detail. So if you click the date here, uh, we'll let it load. You'll see yesterday 
There's an order 6381. It was charged $44.44. And the fee for that was $1.59. Um, so if you take $1.59 and you subtract 30 cents, um, and then you take the 30, you subtract 30 cents, and then you divide, you know, that number, that final number by this 44.44 amount, that's going to actually give you 2.9%, um, right? So it's 2.9% plus 30 cents per transaction. That's what this fee number is representing here. So again, when you're doing your books, trying to calculate profit, you need to make sure that you're factoring, in, factoring that into it. Another thing to note is that you are paying that 3% on with of, of the total gross amount, including taxes and shipping. So yes, that sucks. So this 44.44 amount, that 3% right here that's coming out is with the gross of the sale plus taxes plus shipping. So if you charge $4 for shipping, and you know there's a 90 percent 90 cent tax on you know whatever accumulated to the 44.44 you actually are paying three percent on that so just a heads up um it's very very important that all these little details are being tracked in your bookkeeping just so you know your final numbers it's kind of tricky with mine because i offer free shipping over 75 dollars so sometimes i'm paying for shipping and then Sometimes I'm straight up just paying for the shipping because they got free shipping, but then sometimes they're paying for the shipping, but then I'm paying that 3% and that 30 cent fee per transaction on the shipping money that they gave me. Uh, another thing to note with, while we're on the same topic, um, your sh while this fee of the 2.9% the plus 30 cents per transaction gets deducted from your balance, um, I can show you where your shipping actually gets charged. So like you actually get billed, like you can choose to get billed for your shipping costs to your credit card and it doesn't actually get deducted to your balance, which is something that I personally prefer because I like to get credit card points. So I rather all the money hit my credit card so I get points because I have to pay that money anyway instead of it getting deducted actually from inside my Shopify balance. So if we actually go back here, and we go to our billing and you go to your billing history we're going to a fee threshold you'll see here this fee for 242 dollars was for 49 shipping fees which was billed to my amex card um, but that's the whole point of me showing you that was to show you that those fees are actually getting charged from my card where the other fee of the merchant fee is getting deducted from my balance that's getting deposited into my account. If it was my choice, I would have all my fees get charged to my credit card instead. But unfortunately with the merchant fees, that's just not how it works. So yeah, I think that pretty much summers up, summarizes the Shopify payments and the payouts. Basically the only other thing I would really say that you have fees inside Shopify for besides the merchant fee and the shipping fees is obviously your $29 a month that you pay for Shopify as well as any applications that you use. So if you have any apps like a review app or an email marketing app linked to your Shopify account, which you can get in the app store inside your Shopify account, kind of like when you have an iPhone, you pay for the iPhone, you pay monthly for the iPhone, but then you can have a bajillion apps that you also pay for. Shopify is the same way where you can get a bunch of applications to add to your store, add apps that give you different analytics, all types of things. Some of my favorite apps are actually in the description of this video. Um, but the point of me saying that is that that those would be the only other variable of what other of other fees that you would be accumulating from your Shopify store. Whew, I'm out of breath. I need to start to breathe. All right, guys, so if you enjoyed this video and you got any value out of this content, please do go ahead and like, comment down below any questions that you have. Please subscribe to the channel because that just helps my channel. And I will see you guys in the next video.